So we have to start with, uh, we have to go over nine still. We didn't accept, we didn't accept uh, alcohol odor, marijuana odor at the last meeting. Uh, committee is okay with all the proposed changes in red. So, oh. underlined and then tick mark, tick mark. And so, starting with 10, that's where you can be. So, we're okay up to 10? Yes. Okay. Well, why are the things like a 12 underlined? Uh, that was red text from your recommendations. Oh, okay. But we haven't, we haven't agreed to that yet. Right. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Everything from 10 down is open territory. So 10, uh, I didn't suggest any changes. 11, I didn't suggest any changes. Anybody see any reason to make changes there? Uh, this is, I was gonna say, this is pretty much what we're at now. That's our new place. Say it again. Are we talking about the DSR report? Yeah, this is, this is pretty much uh, exactly the same as is as, yes. as is in the vehicle stop report check off sheet. Notification deletions comments. I may have. Uh, I probably didn't change it. I was pretty careful to keep it the same. But on twelve, uh, the current uh, check off says was contraband discovered? Yes or no? Uh, if yes, type of contraband. Uh, check all that apply. That, that's that's the way it's phrased in the uh, vehicle stop report. And uh, I suggested that uh, there be a check off for marijuana, other drugs, and paraphernalia instead of the way the vehicle stop report phrased it as. Uh, well, I wish I had that out in front of me to be sure about that. I think it says. Uh, Drugs or alcohol. Which one? Right. Which one? Uh, 12. So my suggestion is to change that to uh, marijuana, other drugs, paraphernalia, or even alcohol, be separate checkoffs. So you can tell exactly what the contraband was that was found. We already agree with that. To make that um, on number 12, a contraband discovered to make the marijuana, other drugs, and paraphernalia separate uh, checkoffs. I, I do agree with that. My, my concern on both the points of marijuana and firearms is that there's no apparent categorization to say if they're legally possessed or not. Because what I'm sorry. If they're legally possessed. I, like, like if you have somebody who's like has their registered firearm, right. there's nothing <clears throat> Certainly noteworthy right. about that. So why why would we not have a distinction between? Well, if, if it's legal, it's by definition not contraband. Yeah. So I, yeah. Okay. So it says contraband. Okay. So, so we're I, talking about. Okay. And, and that's kind of uh, marijuana is a perfect example because there's so much with the medical. Life. So that's one of the the, the bigger trends that we've gone through is that's one of the if we smell the odor, one of the first things that we need to be doing is do you have a medical card? See a copy of it. Is it packaged the way that you know per the, the guidelines on the uh, of the, the medical checklist or criteria? And if those are sufficed, as as far as anything involving that, it's medicine. It's as if you had it. Does right. that make sense? And, and so just that's one thing that we implemented well over a year ago. It's it's been well before. Uh, the actual uh, medical statutes went in for, for medical marijuana. Okay. So in so your example, it, it was medically acceptable. It was considered contraband for your cocktail. That's exactly right. It's okay. like it's at. So yeah, it's, it's not contraband. I think you could have a situation where the officer didn't believe it was legal or didn't believe the, the proof that the guy had that his weapon was legal. So he treated it as contraband whether or not, in fact, it would ever be prosecuted. So there's a gray area there, but I don't think you can get rid of everything like that. Yeah, but if your data is reasonably accurate, then you at least, right. and if somebody wants to know, they go back and they look at the details of the stop. Right. You go back and you look and see, oh, the officer marked it as a contraband, but it turned out it, it wasn't illegal. It was a legal gun or whatever. Well, 
with it wouldn't be a lot easier. Um, like if I was looking at the report, if I was going over the report, especially if I was trying to see if there was any discrepancy or any racial profiling or anything like that, for me to be able to look and see and say what's contraband discovered and to see uh, marijuana and then maybe afterward legal or, or not or a uh, weapon legal or not. Uh, it, well, and I think, I think we come back to is it contraband or is it not? It's, I think that's the catch all everything is. Either it is or it isn't, you know. It, it, uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, until I think everybody truly gets familiar with the, the different dynamic that's involved with you know, medical, medicinal marijuana compared to the, the illegal recreational marijuana that's concerned, is kind of really knowing the difference and making sure that we are check marking our lives. You know, and Go, go ahead. It comes down to the data. If you do that, it will prove that. Because if we're collecting stuff that is not contraband and the state is requiring us to submit data that is contraband, you're creating an issue that would uh, be beyond what is before. The, uh, the, next, uh, the next piece there. Result of contraband found, check all that apply. Oh, uh, you know. yeah. What do you mean by that? that yes. that yes. I'm sorry. In sorry. his example, whenever he's talking about the whether the marijuana is legal, mm -hmm. and he was talking about that they don't even market it as legal, and you're asking them to market it that it is legal, mm -hmm. then that goes beyond what the state is. Uh, it would mess up the data if you're collecting it in the same, in the same field. That's what I'm talking about. Yes, because whenever we run our report, there's no way to go back and say those, some of those types of things. So, yeah, well, you have to create it as a so, totally separate piece of data. At the time the officer found the marijuana, she thought it was contraband. Or she thought it wasn't contraband. And she marks it that way in the general stop report. But I would assume you, she wouldn't go back and change No, that, that would be included because at the time of whenever she filled out the racial profile, she believed it was contraband. Yeah. So that's what but we want. What she was talking about is if, it, if the officer knows that it's not contraband, and it is a legal substance that the person is allowed to hear, that it shouldn't be checked. Then we should not be checked. Chief Jones raised this question with the Attorney General when the Attorney General was asking for advice. And he raised it in the context of uh, shake. Is that what it is, Matt? Yeah, or somebody can find a little a, a residue of a, of marijuana or another drug, it can't be prosecuted. It's not a legal amount to prosecute. So does the, does the officer not mark that as contraband or not? It's something he knows that won't be prosecuted. But on the other hand, he did find an illegal drug. So I can think you can argue that both ways. The attorney general said, "Well, that's a good question, but I don't know." According to Wolf and Boxberry. It's the prosecutor's decision whether it's charged or not. The officer can just have to say, I found that on the hill. Well, I, I think that's that we would want to know, say, say it's a situation where the, the search was based on uh, odor. The officer smelled of marijuana and uh, he didn't find a smokable quantity, but he found a roach, or whatever they call it these things. So the, 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 the fact that the officer found a uh, small amount of marijuana that's not going to be prosecuted uh, and to some degree justifies his decision to conduct the odor search. So you know the officer wasn't just making that up, he found the marijuana, but, uh, uh, well, the next, what I was going to say just now is this next uh, paragraph section, the result of contraband found, should follow and apply, citation, warning, custodial arrest, or no action, is not in the vehicle stop report, and that's something I had. So the officer indicates, for instance, that uh, something was found, and you didn't know then what happened because the contraband was found, because there was no data collected on that. But if this question is in the checkoffs, then you'd know, for instance, you could see that oh, marijuana was found, but the officer only gave a warning or took no action. 
So it's pretty easy to see in a situation like that that, the, uh, that there was indeed marijuana found, but the officer didn't consider it actually. Or he did find a, uh, a weapon, he thought maybe the weapon was uh, illegal, but he decided it wasn't and he just gave a warning. So you get the, enough information there that you can tell how serious the, uh, the contraband was. You, you, it, was it uh, no action? That, uh, essentially, the officer decided it wasn't actionable. Was there a warning given? It was something he could have written a citation for, for instance, but he decided not to. Uh, did he write a citation? Uh, did he do the citation instead of a, uh, making an arrest? So you can judge the uh, severity of the, uh, the seriousness of the contraband that was found if you have this information. Yeah, progression is fine. Uh, I would just switch warning for the citation. Well, no action. Yeah. First word. Well, I believe we had the last because I think it's going on almost every day. They're going on. Oh, they pretty frequently. I don't think they're going to very often walk in, find contraband, and then tell everybody in the world to just no action. Oh, but there are certain, if it, if it is shame, then that's the appropriate thing to do. Well, like checking off no act, marijuana, but no action. Uh, if anybody wanted to know the details of the stop, they could go back and look at an incident report. But if you're just scanning the data to see if there's a, a potential problem there, uh, you, you realize that the no action indicates it. Contraband. It was contraband, but it was an action. Right. I also think that kind of conversation would be very important because you can start doing analysis of your demographics, like which officers, under what circumstances, might give a citation versus a warning versus no action, and look at the populations and kind of see like you know, how equally that's applied across the board. I mean, I think that's a, a fair distinction. Yeah, I'm not arguing against. Well, what's your other point? Well, the other the one point that wasn't so picky. I think I think you answered that. <laughs> Once upon a time, I handled some drug traffic. Did it two different counties. And in both counties, we had a fairly sophisticated organization who would pull police reports for their public, try to identify sources that were talking to us. And one of the ways they would do it was arrest that no, no, nothing happened to you. But that would cause them to start back. If you see the same person consistently stop and talk and nothing happens, they come to the conclusion, A, you might be a snitch because that's the excuse the officer gave me to speak to them about something and then let them go. Or they have a deal where no action is being taken because they've been on the community and they've heard the testimony. This is so minor that I don't I don't want to say I hate to bring it up. I mean it, it's I know it happened at least twice because we found records of it when we searched the house. They were shocked that they were going to this kind of trouble to find informants, but they were. Uh, but it was so rare that I'm not even sure it's worth bringing up. These are public records, right? And somebody could get these if they wanted to. Well, the only thing I'm really asking that question was these be public records. But they were not the first call. From the incident-based data that Columbia posts on the city website, there is no information about who the driver was yeah. or who the because officer was. They were somehow they were getting access to actual names of the police. Well, you could do some. And then, the, and I'm talking about this was years ago, like 30 years ago. I, mean, I, I don't even know that anybody could ever do that. But it did, we were all shocked that they had gone to that much trouble. Right? Well. I think, I think it would be like a, a, a much stronger internal indicator for the organization to look at and find out how the individual officers are behaving under those circumstances. I, I think for public uh, dissemination, you, you might see some disparities pop up. I don't, I don't have a problem with reading it the way it is. Just, just overall, the two things we want are the data that tells us, sufficient to tell us when groups are being affected disproportionately and the data that shows whether an officer was acting on uh, strong enough facts to, to, to justify his or her action. 
if that information can be somehow condensed into something that's just in the data, then it means that someone doesn't have to go look, go back and look at incident reports. If you see, for instance, that the officer was acting on a bulletin from detectives or whatever, and then did a, a, a stop for a minor violation and then asked for consent, uh, that the data itself in the incident-based form would tell somebody looking at it, oh, this is probably okay because the officer knew that the detectives were looking for this person. The officer automatically had credible intelligence provided by the, uh, by the detectives, and that makes it unlikely that discrimination was also taking place there. And I, now, you can't tell that for sure without looking at the incident, but so if the data lines up that I way, it's it's pretty good yeah. sign of no problem type of I, I think they started this process because they thought they thought it knew that they wanted to see what was going on. So, so we just hit the pause button real quick. So we actually had an update within our racial profiling system. And Jerry, I don't know if you've got the actual categories of ones that we talked about prior to the. So, wish I would remember better. There's actually a line in there that says investigative, uh, investigative uh, stop that talks about a suspicious person from detectives or, or something like that that, that, oh, really, that that identifies that someone would know that if you know if that's a reason if Bob is a suspect in whatever crime that detectives say and I stop him and I click this box I, I think as a whole we're going to be able to understand that there's not the uh, that there's not there's not a question of whether we had no suspicion or didn't have no suspicion. It's the fact that we are now identifying that he falls within that category. You could go back and check and make sure that the bulletin did actually apply to the person who was stopped. Sure, it could. Uh, but at least the, uh, if there, you've got that initial check off that tells you that uh, the officer wasn't just making something up here, the officer did have or at least claim to have a bulletin that identified this person. So that's a lot more information that we have now. You know, it tells you that well, the stop wasn't really for the minor violation. The stop was really made because the bulletin was out on this person, and the officer was taking advantage of the minor violation to have probable cause for making the stop. And I see that as being okay as long as that bulletin is does refer to that specific individual. I, I would agree in theory. I, my only concern would be is, are we talking about such a minor occurrence that while well, yes it could affect the number of the data, is it a consistent issue? Does that make sense? Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that there's a way to really verify. Columbia has a fourfold stop disproportion. And it's probably not being caused because blacks are speeding that much more than whites. They don't speed at four times the, the number of violations as whites. And it probably, the socioeconomic isn't enough to account for a fourfold dis disproportion in licenses or equipment. So those things are unlikely. There's got to be something else that does. And I've you know, speculated for years. In fact, Attorney General uh, Jay Nixon said in the year 2000, the first executive summary of the stop report, well, this is probably the result of hotspot patrols. But we have no data on hotspot patrols, which essentially is a, a no tolerance uh, patrol of an area in which officers use minor violations to try to uh, control crime. Well, if we know that the officer was making a minor, uh, minor stop, uh, but it was justified by the police bulletin for this individual, uh, then the Columbia Police Department or any other agency can go back and say, well, we looked at this carefully and we found that there is a, a lot more stops of black drivers than you could expect. But when we rule out all the ones in which officers were, act, were acting on a bona fide uh, bulletin about an individual, the disproportion goes way down, then that comes a lot closer to having a, uh, a, a case that can be put forward to the public that shows that officers are not acting on the basis of bias, but they are indeed acting on credible intelligence. That's my logic here. 
Now, it turns out that Columbia can't identify enough cases in which an officer was acting on bulletin to account for the disproportion, then you know you have to go back and look someplace else for it. And we keep looking until we find them, or we change officers' behavior enough that the disproportion just disappears. And I think whatever happens, if we keep working on it, those disproportions will disappear for a variety of minor policy changes that are put into effect as we realize they're necessary. Speaking as an amateur. Absolutely agree. I just, I, I thought we were hung up on the, the few occurrences where, let's say again, you know, Bob has got another guy in town that looks just like him, who drives a car just like him. I pull him over, hey Bob, oh, well you're not Bob. I'm trying to identify two individual instances where that may occur. That, that's, that's where I was hung up. Does that make sense? Well, there, you know, we don't know the problems until we get into it, until we have better data than over to look. It could be that we have a huge problem on officers taking a bulletin and using that as justification for stopping someone who isn't actually specifically described in that bulletin. I don't know whether that problem is there, but the data would tell us if we, uh, if, 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 since, for instance, people in the black community said that, uh, oh, I was, I was stopped and the officer uh, told me there was a bulletin out for, uh, uh, for this car, but she says, oh no, that, that isn't anything like the car I was driving, but he told me he was stopping stopping me because I was, I was driving a red uh, Ford uh, Bullet and followed the blue Chevrolet. Uh, that person has a valid complaint, and if somebody goes back and looks at it and sees the officer checked off the bulletin, watch out for the, the red Chevrolet which just left uh, the scene of the robbery of the convenience store, and the officer stops someone who doesn't reasonably meet that description, then that officer isn't doing what he or she should be doing. And you can track that. Down. They violated that person's constitutional rights. Yeah. I mean, so we have the right, if, you know, if, if the officer, the data doesn't give us that individual incident, especially the way it comes out of the stop report. But if we see there's a disproportion that occurs in that type of situation, and then if we go back to the incident-based data, and we look at all of those incidents that contributed to that disproportion, and we uh, start uh, going through them, and, and the supervisor doesn't necessarily have to do this, it could be a clerk that goes through and just checks facts, uh, looks at the incident report and sees that the car doesn't match the car in the bulletin, uh, then you have a much better idea of what's going on. Well, we you know what the problem is and what to do about it. I've got that. Are we still on call? Yeah, so uh, realizing that uh, even though it's not in red, this result of, result of contraband found, check all that applies, would be something new that's required. Are we okay on uh, suggesting that it be a check off available for the officers in Columbia? The two things under 12 are uh, adding the marijuana, other drugs, paraphernalia, along with alcohol, and then knowing the result of contraband found, whether it was a warning, a citation, a custodial release, arrest, or no action. And you had a proposal to reverse the warning. Yeah, I, I read it the reverse way. Anybody object to that? Do we, do we all agree that that's not worth asking for? Yeah. And of course, this is just advisory. And you, you the chief has a good reason not to go along with it. He'll tell us. It'll... I think the I want to ask some other people. I want to ask some other All those in favor? Aye. Just real quick. Can we maybe say 15 minutes? Let's work on it. Does that work? I, yeah, that's pushing me back. <coughs> so, Even if I have to go, does that is that okay? Uh, no, I think we're good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
I'll just let, let, let's see. As, as much as I love you all, yeah. my wife is yeah, my wife's been a thirty minute pass. <laughs> yeah, let's let's if we can't get it done in fifteen minutes, we'll go come back to it. Okay. Okay, thirteen results and stuff. I'm in search, check all that apply. Citation warning, custodial risk, no action. Leave out other. Yeah, other is left there as an option. And it's not, sometimes officers will check it off, but there is no other other there. I think if they, uh, the only possibilities are uh, warning, citation, custodial arrest, and no action. So it just confuses, it gives officers something that they shouldn't be using anyway. I would ask. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't totally agree with with that because, well, and I guess that depends on what's going to because it says there's some the stuff other than search. Um, I just don't want us to get too far away from sometimes um, emotions, people's inner feelings, how people think, the thought process plays a lot in some of the actions that they do. Uh, and I just, I'm scared we're getting so far away from uh, realizing that sometimes people make bad choices that lead to bad things. Um, and so when you're, you're talking about uh, something, the result of a stop, I've been around where somebody was, they, they said they stopped them for a certain reason and then when it was like, well, no, that was impossible, that could happen, and then the reason changed, and then the reason changed again, um, you know, with the police officers. So to me, um, it's kind of hard to take that other route. Well, this is just asking for what the, what did the officer do uh, based no. on what it went on, the, what action was taken. We have instances where other parts can be described well. Oh, well, that's a good answer. I don't know. Yeah, something I didn't know. Because there was no action on the officer, there was action on the person who drove off. Yeah. Okay, it needs to be in there. <laughs> that, that's, well, that's what I was going to say is, I go to stop somebody, they pull over, I can have my car, they're gone. I may not. So I should try that. So I may not have, yeah. <laughs> it's going to have to go to the back. No comment. Okay. Uh, so this, this is what I, when I say that I, I, don't, I, I don't know everything. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything. Nobody had ever come up with an explanation of why other was important there. But if there is one, I'm fine with it. Yeah. So, so I leave, leave other in. I moved that we accept 13 results of stop other than search. We change the wording and citation around the top one. Do we have a motion on the floor? Second. Any objections? Uh, uh, motion and second motion. Okay. All the questions. Question. Well, I, I vote for it. All in favor? All in favor. Aye. 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 Right. 14, a citation issue, violation alleged, leave out warning, check all that apply, moving equipment, license, registration. My only concern with that would be we stop them for blowing through a red light. They have a suspended operator's license. I'm going to give you a warning on the red light. I'm going to write you a citation for your no operator's license. Even a citation is technically considered a risk. Now I've arrested you for having no driver's license, but I've given you a warning for the, the reason for the stop. So if, if the question is the limiting warning, our data covers that. It says citation, moving equipment, license. And that's a warning, moving equipment license. And that's it. That came in up. 
uh, April 28th. Okay. That was our medical leave. That was when we got an update on the state of medical. Cool. Ignore what I said. The it's already been fixed. Your question. <laughs> So we don't need to do anything? Yes, we need to leave it. Leave that warning. Well, we could have a, a separate checkoff that says if a warning is issued, check off, all will apply. That's but what I just said. That's what the yeah. citation, those three categories, and warning, those three categories. Okay, well, that's, I thought, I thought they, asking for it on warnings was overkill, but I'll follow through. So we need to leave 14 to now, uh, take out, leave, leave, leave off a warning. So 14 says if the citation is issued, check off all that apply. And then add a new number that says if warning is issued, uh, check, all check all that apply. So, yeah. Which is what Jer Jerry says is, uh, is currently the, okay. what the check off says. Okay, so do we have a motion to accept 14 based upon the changes of added and warning issues? Check all that apply. I so move. Second. Okay, right, question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposes? So that makes the warning. No, just do 14A. Okay. Is it a 14A or is it just yeah, yeah. do that? Then it still follows. Okay, 14A. And then the same sort of thing for arrests made, all that apply. Uh, the uh, uh, I put in. Uh, it never asked if uh, the vehicle stop report has never asked if an arrest was made for a weapon, and it seems to me that's an important enough violation that we should have a check off for it. If for instance, a weapon is found as contraband, which is part of the vehicle stop report, you would think there would be a, a place for the officer to check off an arrest made because of an illegal weapon, but that's never been in there. So if a weapon yeah. was found, it, it came yeah. out as another violation. If it's a violation because they're not supposed to have a weapon, According to UCR category versus office of Oh. Because. Isn't that correct? It, it would go under. Uh, it would go under a weapons offense, or it would go under. No, it would be a weapons offense because it's either going to be FIP, it would be a DUW, but that's got an associated crime. Or it would be illegal or uh, manufactured. Uh, and that's going to go under weapons offense too because that's going to be under the, what is it, RSO 570? I'm, I'm thinking oh. from the categorization that we get to the DI. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying is. Um, but something. UC and UCR don't fail. Right. UCR compared to what I no, IBR. IBR is a subcategory of UCR. Correct. Yes. UCR is uniform crime report. Mm -hmm. And it's being replaced by infamous. It is not. IBR is not. It's not. <laughs> uniform crime reporting in the old was summarization. Hierarchy. Yeah. IBR is just instant phase, so the UCR is the category is both of them. Well, let's not worry about that moving. Yeah. Well, the other, so it would be okay to have a check off, for, check off for weapons or not? If you want to, that's fine. And then I'll just turn Arrests it. are sometimes made for having a weapon. Right. And then, okay, what was the and then the other change I suggested is that there's been a, uh, a check off for traffic violation but I suspect that a lot of times an arrest is made for a traffic violation. It's actually an, uh, an issue of the person not having a valid license or the officer not being sure of the identification of the driver. If they don't know who somebody is, they'll take him in to make sure who the person is to make sure he's not someone who's wanted for something terrible. 
This is uh, it's written up in the traffic uh, from the traffic policy. There's a paragraph in there that explains what officers are supposed to do if they're not sure about who someone is if they doubt the identification is correct. So I, I think uh, uh, there's often a, uh, a fairly large disproportion for traffic violations against black drivers, but I suspect this may, a lot of these may be caused by actually uh, uh, not driving at high speed, it's dangerous, but not having a license, maybe having a remote license or something like that. So it would be useful to know when it's a li op operator's license that caused the arrest and not what we would normally think of as a traffic violation. So that's why I asked for that. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to accept adding operator license and adequate identification and weapon to number 15. Second. Moving. <laughs> Whatever. I, I don't think an adequate identification is really necessary. I mean, there's. Because here's. Ultimately, what it's going to come down to is that would fall under any sort of action off of inadequate identification. If, for instance, we took somebody down to PD to run them through a live scan machine, most of those we do on scene because we have portable fingerprint scanners. And the, the way that we act upon is, for example, if we have our portable fingerprint scanner, when we scan and it comes back nothing, we're done. So if we wouldn't have a, a tool or a medium in place with that, and we take them down for a live scan, this is all, we are, we kind of teeter into a gray area of where does reasonable suspicion end and probable cause to remove them from a traffic stop, transport them, do, you know, a search of, of I tell you, I tell you, the arrest of them if you actually. If that's what I was going to get to is, if if I have probable cause to believe that you know under Columbia, under Columbia City Ordinance, if I feel like I've been deceived for one reason or another, you are now under arrest for deceiving a law enforcement officer, which I think now we come into really another violation, and we're talking about. I can maybe think of once or twice that, I, that we have ever removed somebody to get an identification. And again, th that was all, th there was a, a, an articulable suspicion because ultimately, when folks lie to the police, they lie for a reason, right? And a lot of those reasons are outstanding warrants, uh, suspended revoked driver's privilege. Um, that felt yeah, any number of things. And then if we we're going to erase, erase based on that, well, then we've got, well, he lied to me because he didn't have a good driver's license. Well, now he's getting a ticket for no license, or he's getting a warning, or it's uh, he had an outstanding warrant, or whatever it is. Um, well, the two points that made me suggest putting this in is I've been told by chiefs that officers will arrest people if they're not sure who they are. And it's in the. Uh, oh, if, if that's the case, I'm going to walk away. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm simplifying yeah. things for the layman here. That if you don't know who someone is, you don't want to let them just. Well, and, that's, and the and other and thing is, it's written up this way in the uh, Columbia policy on traffic stops. There is this section that explains what officers are to do if they're uh, if they don't feel like an identification is uh, assured. But this doesn't happen very often. You're saying. I, we, we all have portable fingerprint scanners. If there's ever a question, and we're not, we're not going to compel someone to even identify themselves unless there's, unless we have very specific, particular reasons to say, this is who I believe you are, or probable cause exists. And, and I'll give you, a, you know, a perfect example is, we will have these incidents come up that, you know, our, our reason for stopping a car is not because of the driver. It may be because of the passenger. I can't tell you how many times uh, prior to all the stuff going on, you, 
you got somebody hanging out of the moonroof of the car blowing down Broadway. Well, well, now we're stopping you because maybe we've got the traffic violation, but we've also got an ordinance violation, uh, you know, being outside the frame of the vehicle. So when we stop that vehicle and we talk to, you know, our, t our attention may be directed to the driver, but then it's like a passenger that was, you know, outside of the car. Well, now we're, now I have a lawful reason, A, to arrest you, and secondly, to identify who you are. And, and I think a, a lot of misconceptions are is just because you get pulled over, you, you don't have to identify yourself if there's not a absent suspicion, if there is no probable cause to arrest you for a violation. Does that make sense? Well, yeah. The, and I, I'm, uh, uh, with Matt's input, that uh, this actually doesn't work this way anymore because officers have uh, fingerprint scanners that people aren't actually being arrested because of a lack of adequate identification, but it doesn't, mean, it doesn't happen off enough that we need to check on it. What I'm looking at is if a lot of black drivers are being arrested because they, uh, the officer isn't sure of their identity, then we need to check off in order to identify that's what's happening. If that's not happening, I don't care. But I don't know what they would be arrested for. Well, you, you, don't, uh, you don't take them to court for it, but you take them into custody. Just saying you don't do that anymore because you have the fingerprint thing with Correct. you, so that's not happening. Yeah, but, but your arrest is still based upon probable cause. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure what the car is. Yeah, and, I mean, and, and that's the reason that we have some of that technology, but I mean, to arrest a person is based upon probable cause. I can detain someone based upon reasonable suspicion, suspicion. And we take him down for whatever the investigation. Wasn't well, that called uh, custodial, custodial arrest? It, no, it's, it's because it starts as an investigatory stop and that's what you're really doing is investigating your identity. Is that right? Sure. And after you have investigated their identity, then you are going to have to that tape and you say, no, oh, we can't figure you out. You still don't want to tell us goodbye or Sorry, I'm not going to accept this. We're going to make further investigation, which you currently do when you have all the dogs to arrest. So, so uh, we wanted to express that I'll leave it on there for the inadequate. What do you think, Matt? Do we need it in there or not? I don't. I really don't. Let's leave it out then. Okay, so no, we, we want to in, we we make that. a motion that we accept number 15. With the exception of the inadequate identification, um, not there. I have a motion. I'll make a motion. I second. Okay, then we second it. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any questions? 16 and 17 aren't in the vehicle stop report, but it seems to me it would be very useful to, uh, to know when forces will be used. I mean, it's going to be in the records anyway, but it would be useful to have as a check off so it's easy to see whether uh, one group is uh, disproportionately affected by the use of force or not. And if we see that disproportion is there, uh, the, if, it, if it's against black drivers, it gives them uh, grounds to uh, bring it up with the police department and, and say what's going on with the use of force against black people. Or if the data shows that there is no disproportion against one group or another, then it gets it goes up for uh, another star of the crown of the uh, police. I, I should go like a degree further and see what use of force is actually applied. Like what was was the taser brought to bear? Was what was it, was it a verbal altercation? Was it physical? I mean, at what point did we showing a weapon? Yeah, etc. And this is some more details come out on this after the uh, Minneapolis event. Yeah. We're all attuned to officers using excessive force. And I've, I've seen write ups where, uh, and this is probably in Columbia's policy already, where you have the stages of degrees of force that can be used. And we could have check offs for that in here, maybe not <coughs> over here for traffic stop information. I don't know. Sure. Is that nice with the public? I mean, that's about as direct as you can get in terms of discrimination. My only question would be, are you looking for it specifically in the context of the traffic stop 
Yeah, that's the that's that's overall. Well, that, that data is available overall. Correct. Right. That's, that's the only point I was going to make. Is right. If you want to look at it specifically. So it technically is. So when we clear our traffic stop, we've got our new disposition codes. And if we have handcuffing without rest, if we have consent search, consent denied, uh, that would, I think that would be the most appropriate place to, to add this category because then we're now, we're tracking it just like we do with traffic stops, but we can add the element in there of, you know, with uh, uses of force. It could be, you know, any number of things. It could be balance and displacement, it could be whatever we want it to be. And we are going to track that, for example, so we have our little box and we do our BSR, we close that out. Well, when we actually close a traffic stop, you're closing it with a report, with an arrest, no report, with a warning, consent denied, consent granted, you know, uh, arrest with our uh, uh, handcuffing potential without uh, arrest. Go ahead, Jim. For the purpose of this meeting, um, just say whether you want to click the that or not. If you want to implement it, we can figure it out and get it in And that's what I'm saying is, without it actually being in the BSR report, I think that would be a better. You link to a different database. Or correct. Or Same database. Are you saying that the use of force now to categorize it, not to say like what type of force is used? Is that what you're saying? Good. Just a different way to track it. This report is about tracking stuff. Right. To me, we can also put in what training is required and what kind of parties you want to do about that. Yeah. But I don't think that, I personally won't vote against both of these, not because it's a bad question, but because it's duplicative and they're outside the scope of what we're supposed to do. Well, what are we doing? So you're saying both these are already tracked as part of the report process outside of the uptake form? Yeah, so number 17, we already do. Okay. We, we already do that when we actually close up the traffic stop. And if we wanted to make a suggestion, number 16 would be a suggestion to where we would do it to where it's still trackable. We can obtain all that data. It just won't be in the DSR. Well, our, our suggestion would be that not that it has to be part of the DSR data, but that Columbia collected data one way or another so that it can oh, be included I'm in the report. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I was getting to. Yeah. It, it can uh, be I'm collected. Not, I would say that on, for the consent denied, too, or whatever else that you were like, objecting yeah. to before, yeah. I wouldn't say they have to ask twice. But if it's already in another database and you can link to that database, that's fine. With me. We, okay. We've been doing that for probably close to a year. Well, I'd like to see, I personally would like to see that uh, that information recorded in the incident-based data that Columbia publishes, I think everybody would like to know how that comes out, and it doesn't have to be a check-off that's added. So that would be the, the recommendation made in the So let's uh, say that... You said to do like a recommendation that we need to see that information, yes. how that information is... Yeah. I think the recommendation would be that the data is captured and it's displayed in a way that the public can access. Uh, but it doesn't, I don't think it should be in the category, this particular piece of category. Well. Correct. No, I'm, I'm okay with that. But that's I'm okay that, with it as long as I can see it. Because okay. I do think that it has a little bit of relevance. I guess I'm looking at it from the other end. And on the other side of it, as an African American person, sometimes it does play a part in the actual traffic stop. So if it's occurring, we want to know it. Yes. Right. And if it's and not so, occurring, we want the officers to right. get credit so, for it. Yeah. If not, you know, it works both ways. I agree completely with that. I just don't think we need to do it in this document. Yeah. So, we can make a recommendation. Well, we can say we, we want this yeah. included yeah. in the report. Yeah. Yes. Okay, okay. so that was uh, can I get a motion? Then, with that being said, that 16 and 17, that there would be no action on either of those. Uh, I'll move to delete paragraph 16 and 17. Yeah, well, let's seven. say that we, that we recommend that that, uh, that information be recorded as a, 
And I suggest that as a separate motion. That okay, we we'll go ahead and take the two motions. I would delete that we, I said, I'm moving that we delete 16 and 17. Second. Okay, the move to possibly second that we delete 16, 16 and 17. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposes? Questions? Anyone? Okay. Well, there could be another motion coming from Mr. Barr. I move we get out of here. <laughs> no, I, think I, I move that we, we that we recommend that the data collected on use of force and use of restraints uh, during uh, traffic stops be integrated into the information uh, in, the, in, in the incident based data released by uh, Columbia Police Department. I would I would make a motion to table that because I think there's a lot of discussion that we can have with that. It, it, it simply be is the type of force used, the offense requir requiring force. I think there's there's a lot of, you know, we can have use of force due to an ordinance violation, use of force due to a misdemeanor, okay. use of force due to a felony. I, I, think it's, I think there's a huge spectrum that we should probably discuss. Well, if Columbia, this is Columbia Police issue. Department is collecting this data, and so we don't have to ask for more data be, to be collected. We just look, would like to have access to to it in a way that's useful for helping us understand what happens during traffic stops. But, yes, so CPD does collect the data. They collect it for the entire department, which may not all consist of traffic stops. What, what I think, and, and functionally what we can do, is apply it directly to traffic stops. So that if we say how many uses of force we had for the entire department for every contact we've ever had, and then separate that for traffic stops, now we're looking at two completely different, two two different categories. Is my thought. So, um, you're making a motion that we table it and look at that. Table it and be, have we discuss. Could I? Could I? Yeah. Yes. Just withdrawing the motion on the guy for lack of a second. I'll withdraw it. Okay, and then um, we have a motion to delete the data on the next month. Mm -hmm. okay. I agree. And I'll leave it. I'll do some more. Move and second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that's what it said. All right, very good. Thank you all very much for. We, do we, do we, uh, do we have any public really quickly? No public. Okay. Thank you all. Um, and our next meeting will be August 11th. Oh, so, okay. Boy, we got some work done today. Yeah.